good day everyone, it's me Haz and I'm bringing some additional tips for you all in Nino Kuni Crossworlds to look out for and hopefully will help you improve your account. You guys have been nothing but supportive over the past few weeks and I'm incredibly grateful for that. It's been the only thing keeping me stable the past few days after getting some pretty nasty attacks from people for my YouTube growth. But know that I appreciate each of you, so thank you so much. I will likely also be streaming live today on my Twitch, so if you have any questions you'd like to ask or just hang out today with the community, come by and say hello. So let's talk about those mistakes. Number 1. Don't waste Territe. This tip is exclusive to the global version of the game. The biggest change possibly to early progression has been the addition of Territe, which luckily with smart management you can manage to a degree. Since there's a lot of use for Territe from upgrading equipment and even crafting, we have to be a lot smarter about how to use this resource, unless you constantly want to be resource starved. The good thing is that if you have been spending your Territe, it's not really that big of a problem since it's something you can just manage better moving on, and it will possibly also get better after tomorrow's content update. Crafting as much as possible is no longer the best option early game to acquire those early 4 star items for especially free to play players to upgrade, as it costs too much terite and so we have to evaluate what items we will be using. At this point 3 star items become the first short term equipment that increase in value, as if you weren't as lucky to snatch those 4 stars, likely by now you have awakened 7 3 star items with 3 passives on them. To progress on with the game, it might be a better option to spend those hundreds of terite on upgrading your 3 star items instead of endlessly crafting and hoping for 4 stars. In the end, you can always slowly craft a little bit every day and switch to 3 stars or 4 stars later. But if you already crafted, that's also not a problem because it's also worth to slow down now a little bit, enjoy the game and think about your long term progression instead with 4 stars, it's up to you. If you have 4 stars like I did, I got quite a bit lucky with weapons on my crafting, you're all good, if not, just stay patient and just spend your territe prudently, focusing on reaching the story cap, I think around level 50 is it where it really gets hard to progress, and then maybe focus more on crafting. Number 2. Messing up your tetro puzzles. Tetro puzzles. Now this is the content I've seen a lot of people completely ignore because it doesn't seem as important or is just some silly minigame you don't have enough blocks for at the start. This is possibly one of the biggest upgrades you can do for your account at the current stages of progression, and I encourage everyone not to ignore it. I think the biggest mistake I've seen people do is just spreading their blocks all around the different puzzles without any care and leaving it until later. This way you're likely getting maybe 200 or 300 character power from them and wasting a huge potential if you have the blocks. If you completely fill a single puzzle, you gain at least around 3000 character power based on the blocks you used and as a massive upgrade to your overall account. As you can see, a single completed puzzle can give you 10 times more power than just tossing them all around in the different books you acquired, so I recommend you to check all your blocks and try to see if you can at least fill one tetro puzzle and gain those benefits. You can also acquire additional puzzles by completing higher level soul stones in your records, such as the 10 star with Cloud Coal Canyon, and you'll be able to work on another book for additional CP. Another way to unlock a new puzzle is by spending your corrupted Natrum's essence you gained from your daily dungeons in Natrum's Nest on the puzzle book in the Dimensional Border Shop, and then later buy the puzzle pack to fill it in. Here too Natrum's Nest is actually a fantastic way of acquiring additional puzzle blocks, so make sure not to miss out on them. Number 3 is ignoring your gems. If you've been farming in the chaos field on floor 2 or 3, at this point you have encountered gems. In fact, you were already probably annoyed how much space they take up. Gems are your new items, you can socket into your high rarity items, adding to their power by either increasing evasion, accuracy or critical hit chance and so on. Since you will be gaining tons and tons of these gems anyway in the chaos field by farming for territe or skill books, I recommend leveling them up and actually socketing them into your items and using them as they are a big jump in power. You can safely just use the lower level gems to upgrade the higher, better ones, since you'll get so many of these that you aren't really wasting anything, and a 6 star gem can give you up to 2000 power each with only a little bit of gold spent on them. Upgrading these gems mostly only take time and gold to farm them out, and they're quite simple to level. One big warning on the other hand is that to take out gems from your items, you have to use extraction tools that you can buy in the shop for 10,000 gold each, so it's quite expensive. 
so at least make sure you add the gems you think are the right stats that you'd like to use. Number 4 is not claiming your daily fuse badges. The Genie of the Cauldron is an in-game lottery minigame where you can sacrifice your items to create tickets that can be used to win special prizes and rewards such as the Yacht Mount, cosmetics or skill books for your characters. To not sacrifice valuable items, you can also use these so-called fuse badges that have several varieties, from wood to platinum. Every single day, the player can get more fuse badges by kicking a bunch of pots, trees and water plants and ever more, or even throw a bunch of coins in the fountain. This way you can get at least up to 50 fuse badges that add up quite a bit over time and will allow you to save up a lot of tickets over the course of a few days and not wasting any other valuable items. So just kick those pots, trees, water the plants, throw coins into the fountain until you no longer gain fuse badges and you're done for the day. I personally do like to use only the badges, not to waste anything else, like the field boss essences people like to use and been recommending. And the game is a long-term slow progression MMO, so we aren't really in a rush to get everything from the Ginny immediately, so just take your time. And the last one is ignoring Chaos Gates. Chaos Gates are random events that happen in different areas and channels of the game world and spawn angry chaos monsters you can duke it out with on the field. These events are not only announced by the game, but you can also always check on your world map if there's any event currently going on. The reason these chaos gates are so important is because, well first, I find them quite a bit of fun in the middle of all this grinding. But, much more importantly, they drop you purification medals and Torn Swift Solution certificates. Torn Swift Solution certificates we already knew we can exchange for actual tickets to do more daily quests, so they're great. More experience, more rewards. Purification medals, on the other hand, are a completely different exchange shop in the game where you get the option to spend it on some cosmetics or cosmetic materials to craft your favorite looking outfit for your characters. Another option you have here is to buy 100 inventory slots for your account, but only once. Each of these slots costs 100 purification badges, which is quite a bit expensive. But if you're battling with low inventory space like the most of us, even after leveling up all your different characters, this is a good option to consider. One tip I can recommend for doing these Chaos Gates is to make sure you do them in parties, as there is a random reward each of the monsters can drop that can give you a big chunk of certificates or purification medals. So the more monsters you kill in a group, the better your chances are for getting these big rewards. But that is it for today's additional 5 tips or mistakes everyone for some more advanced Nino Kuni content. I hope this helps with both transitioning to how the game is on global and to help you enjoy the different activities you can actually do in the game that's not just grinding and enjoy progressing your character and getting more powerful. The content update is only one day away, quite excited for it and finally they are adding kingdom dungeons and some new areas to explore and I really look forward to them because I think the best part of Nino Kuni is that every day we'll have something special, a special event to do and keep things fresh. I'm probably live on Twitch now so feel free to come by and discuss this a bit more especially if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching everyone and I'll see you all the next time. Bye bye.